In this tutorial, we're going to work some more with our temperature calculator. And in this, we're going to, instead of using separate buttons in here, we're going to use a segmented control. And we're also going to build in so that the user can tap a button on the segmented control to clear the value that's in here. So to begin with, I'm going to start by deleting these buttons. Right, and then I'm going to drag a segmented control out here onto my view. And we have a first and second button, and with it selected over in your attributes panel, you can play around with different things, like if you wanted borders around it, or if you wanted a bar, if you wanted bezel. So you can adjust those to your liking. And also in the options over here. Instead of two segments, I'm going to have three. And the title for my first segment, we can see segment zero. It says first, so let's say Celsius. And then for the second segment, we're going to say that is Fahrenheit. And then the third segment, clear. Okay, let's see what that looks like in the simulator. Okay, looks good. Now we need to set up the segmented control so that it will do our functions. And we'll also have a function in here to clear the value that's in here. So we'll come back in. Okay, so let's show the assistant editor. And I'm gonna get rid of this side panel. And let's connect this segmented control to the convert temp method. So I'm just gonna right click and drag on it and point it to the convert temp method. And so now it should be connected. And if I just check on it, it says value changed. So with a segment, the default is when a value on the segment has been changed, and that's what's going to trigger the convert temp method. Now our method before was getting the information from the sender as it was for a button, but now we're working with a segmented control. So instead of a button, we're going to get the value of what was selected from the segmented control. So by commenting that out, of course, we have some other um, errors because now we don't have anything called the button. Let me just take this over into full screen so that we can have a little bit more space to work with. That's better. Okay, so instead of a button, we are going to say it's a UI segmented control. And I'm just going to call this nav and we'll say that's equal to a UI segmented control and we do want to get the value of the sender like we had done with the button only in this case it's going to be the selected segment okay next we're going to create an integer that is going to represent the value of the segment that's being sent so I'm just going to call it segment and that is equal to sender selected segment index so in our segmented control, right, each of these has an index value. So if I bring up the attributes panel again and we click on this, you can see that these are listed segment zero, segment one, segment two. So what will happen is if Celsius is clicked, it's gonna say segment zero. And if clear is selected, it'll say segment, it'll send a value two as a part of sender and then that will be assigned to the value segment and then we can check to see what that equates to. So we'll have selected segment index of 0, 1, or 2 and that will be assigned to an integer. And next let's create a string for the segment name and that's going to be equal to the sender title for segment at index. And what index number do we want to get? That's where we're going to use the segment from the selected segment. So we'll say it's segment. So we have a string that we're creating called segment name. It's going to get the information from our segmented control. And the title for the segment, we're going to get from the value of the selected index number. So 0, 1, or 2. And that will be assigned to a string. 
And so we're doing this so that we can actually print out the information so that you can see not only just how to get the index number of the segment, but also the value for what was clicked in case you ever need to use that information. So again, we're going to do another string. And this one is going to be called result text. And that is going to be set to a new string that's going to be allocated and initialized. So I'm going to init with format. So I'm going to have some text in here. And it's going to say, you selected segment. Now for a digit, we use a percent sign and a D. I'm going to put a backslash N for a new line and a percent at sign, which is just general text. And so my placeholders are going to be replaced with the segment, which is our integer of the number, and then segment name. And I forgot to put an at sign symbol in here, so let me put that in. And this should be a percent sign for my placeholder, so percent sign at sign. So this will be replaced by the segment integer, and percent sign at sign will be replaced by segment name. Okay, now let's, we have the formulas in here, but it's checking for the button information. So let's say if, let's say segment is equal to zero, right? They've, they've clicked the first segment, which is Celsius. And then we have else, we should do an else if segment is equal to one, and that would do Fahrenheit. And then we'll say else, and let's just do a quick NS log. We'll do the We'll clear the content of the text field in a minute. So let's just do a, a log statement saying, ready to clear. OK, now I have a couple of warnings here, but um, it's first of all, it's because nav's not being used and result text isn't being used yet. So I'm just going to test this in the simulator and just see what's happening so far, and we can clean this up. I'm going to run, right, and I'll put in a temperature. Now, if I tap Celsius, nothing happens, so it looks like things aren't working. Uh, but that's because this was automatically selected, right? It was selected when this loaded. So if I go to Fahrenheit, it will do the conversion. Now, the keyboard's not retracting, and so we can go back in and fix that. And our clear it is just doing a log statement, so that's okay. So this is working to a point, but we need to add some other things. Also, it's not displaying the, the part right here where we had to show the selected segment, and that's because we haven't put it in anywhere to actually display it. So let's go back in. We at least know that we're able to get the segment integer, and that is able to show us our if, else, if, else statement. So that main part is working. So let's go back in and, and clean some of the rest of this up. Okay, so to print the selected segment, let's come down and where we're printing this information, right? We're printing the result string. Uh, let's also, at the very end here, after Celsius, I'm gonna put in at sign, percent at sign, and we're going to tell it to replace this with the result text that we defined in this string. And then I'm going to do the same thing for Fahrenheit. OK, so let's see if that part works. OK, yes, we can see you selected segment one, and then it's running out of room here. So I need to make some adjustments in Interface Builder. So in Interface Builder, let's take the label and I'm going to expand the height of it. And over here on the Attributes panel, I'm going to increase the number of lines to like, I'll do three or four just so that we've got enough room. And while we're here, we can take a look at the segmented control. And you can see that, right, segment zero Celsius is selected. Instead, let's try making clear selected. So then this one will be pushed in first when the screen loads, and then the user can right away put in a number and tap Celsius or Fahrenheit. So let's test that in the simulator. And now right away we can tap, we can see our result, and it's select, selected segment zero and the name of the segment. So you selected segment one, 
right? This is 0, 1, and 2, and the text from the segment. So let's go back in and set up the clear button so that when we tap this, it will clear the text here, and it'll also take the value out of our text field. So I'm coming back into the implementation file, right? So what do we want to have it do? We already are printing a log statement, so in addition to that, we want to say, let's set the result label text to be equal to an empty text string. Okay, and we'll set the value of our input text, our temp input, to zero. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so our clear button works. Okay, so let's go back in now and see if we can get the keyboard to retract. Now, we already have this the background button set up to retract the keyboard, but let's also do it so that when we tap one of the options on the segmented control that it will do that as well. So I'm going to come back to Interface Builder and I'm going to go back into the Assistant Editor and let's see what happens. Now the, the segmented control, we can see what it's connected to on value changed. It's going to file zone or convert temp. Let's see what happens if we just connect it to our hide keyboard method. And run it again. And then we tap something here. Very good. So it removes the keyboard as well as still tapping on the background. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to exit out of the assistant editor and go back into the implementation file. And actually we still have an unused variable here. We actually didn't need this. So I'll just comment that out. We didn't have to have nav in here because we were able to refer to our segment by getting everything through the sender name. So that's an overview of implementing a segmented control and learning how to get the values not only from the segments with the titles on there but also their number value and using those in your code.